Hey everyone, welcome back to the Magic Vlog. Back at Q's Comics and Games in Dexter, Missouri. And, oh boy, we've been waiting for this for a while, haven't we? Oh yeah, our first duel. Yep. Well, first Magic Vlog duel. Yep, on camera, yep. Should be fun. Yeah. Brings back memories, doesn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> the first time we ever fought was actually at your place. Yeah, it was, what, two, three years ago? Getting close to... It's two, <laughs> getting close to two years, actually. Yep. Uh, but, and today, we are p pitting my Teamer Factory against his... Now you're legendary. Yep. Uh, Both have really strong game plans, and if either one's executed, they're probably winning the game. I don't have much to stop his all his uh, infinite thopters, and he doesn't have... Them. Anything you can do when uh, I flip Rizella, but that's not till later in the game, so it's up to me to survive that long. Yeah. Now, beforehand, we've already determined who's going first. Yep, roll box cars. Can't really beat that. Yeah, and we've already <laughs> cut and shuffled, so I guess we can just go right to the battlefield. All right. Oh, perfect. Yep. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> All right, and I got a pretty good hand here, so I will keep. Yeah, mine's not actually half bad either. I will keep as well. All right. Good luck, buddy. You too. Hmm. I'm gonna start off with the needle spires. Ooh. Your turn. Manland. Yep. Uh, nice little red, white manland there. Yeah, this deck needs lots of white early, and I don't need a lot of red, but I do need some, so red-white dual lands are a necessity. Well, luckily, I've got myself a dual land as well. All right. Game, Game trail. trail. All right. Go for it, buddy. Turn number two. Um, let's see. I want to set up to make sure I have an untapped land on turn four, so... We're just going to play another Needle Spires. Okay. Your turn. I draw. Shouldn't have any problems with red and or white mana this game. <laughs> well, I'm probably not going to be having much trouble on uh, any mana at all. Because I've gotten an island. All three colors already. And I'm going to tap this for green and this for blue. Well, it really Seems just... Seems like a conduit coming. Yep, serve another conduit. Really nice card right here for mana fixing early in the game. Yep, if I had one, I would have cast it on turn two, but I do not. Yep, it has me getting two energy right off the bat. Really good two, really good card for early in the game. Yep. I'm going to play a Fortified Village, revealing a forest, so it comes into play untapped. Yep, That now, just so you know, my game trail has the, a similar ability to that. And I have nothing to do with it. I want to do a sorcery speed, so we'll pass it to you. Which probably means it's going to be bad for me, because he's probably got something instant speed right, waiting for me. Yep, we do have Grandpa of the Past that you see in the video. We got good old Stasis there. We got another island. And... I think I want to try getting this out as early as possible. Fabrication module. Yep. And then we're going to go ahead and swing for two. I will take two damage, down to 18. And it's your turn, buddy. All right. There. The reason I attacked right now is because he's probably not going to be having anything with haste. Yeah. I'm going to play that force we revealed earlier. No need to play a different land and tell him how many lands I actually have. We're going to drop Nahiri, which is our powerful fourth turn play that we were ready for. Nice. And I really don't like you having a lot of mana. So we are going to minus two Nahiri and exile your servant. That's all right. Try to slow down your mana production. That's all right, because things are not going to be that easy for you in the coming turns. Yep. So I'll pretty much have to get Gisela out or beat him before he starts getting all that energy with uh, the decoction modules and all the other energy cards in there. Okay, I'm, I'm a little at a loss right here. I'm not sure if this is going to be a good move, but green and three blues. Rashmi. Ooh, Rashmi. That's not going to be good for you. 
Uh, well, you can't kill it until you tap it, so we're just going to go to our turn and see what we draw. And we're going to play Ether Hub of our own. We'll get an energy that we really can't use too much of. Here, you can borrow one of my... You can borrow my stuff. Okay. We're Always going to plus two Nahiri, discard a card. We do not need extra mountains, so we're going to discard that. Draw this card. And that's a pretty good draw. Hmm. Let's see what happens when we play Frederick Gear Hulk. Okay. And turn himself into an 8 8. That is actually a very good move because I don't really have anything to do at this point. I mean. Your turn. All right. Untap, draw. This is not going to be the smartest move, because, but I had to play this island last turn in order to get Rajmi out. Yeah. Spire Bluff Canal. Unfortunately... And it was going to come into play untap last turn, too, so it's fine. No, it wasn't. It was going to come... It was your fourth lane. Yeah. So it would have been tapped. Yeah. Uh... See, we know he has um, lightning, uh, harness lightnings, but... He doesn't have quite the energy right now to deal 8 to the Gear Hulk, so we're going to try and beat him down with this 8 8 trample before he gets infinite thopters. Servant of the Conduit. Yep. That is your first spell, so here comes the Rashmi trigger. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Goes into your hand. Yep. But now, Servant of the Conduit gets gives me 2 energy, but then comes the Fabrication Module. Because that because that triggered off, I get a plus one plus one counter on Rashmi here. Okay, we're not too worried about his creatures getting a little bit of power and toughness boost because he can't compete with the eight eight right now. But some, but you have to be careful because I've got a couple of violence here, buddy. Yep, I watched the video on your deck tech though. I don't know if you got counter spells or not. The funny thing is, we're not actually using any sideboard cards here. Yeah, these are just the main decks that you guys have seen already. Hmm. I think I want to cash in this other land for a better card. Yeah, we did a really good card. Of course, you know that I have that Aether Hub in my hand thanks to Rashmi. Yeah. Which if I get which gives me an energy as soon as it comes into play. Which will trigger my fabrication. Exactly. We're going to take with our big old 8-8 eight eight and see if he just does 8 damage. Yeah, he will. All right, down to 12. Yep. Now, most people would say that think that that's a bad thing, that I would take 8 damage just right off the bat like that, but sometimes you've got to take hits in order to give them. Yeah, next turn he can get a really good Rashmi trigger and be able to multi-block Verter's Gear Hulk, so... If I get the right cards. Yeah. But so, definitely not trading for those cards now. And I think... I think we're just going to play another one. Okay. We only got two in our deck and we use your both of them, so... If the first one was good, the second one's going to be better. <laughs> your turn. <sighs> and tippity tap. I draw my card. That's actually not that half bad. I'll play my Aether Hub. Which gives me one more energy. Yep. And another plus one, plus one counter on... Well, I might as well put it on Rashmi, right? Yep, you don't want him to die to random four damage. Uh, most of my creatures have four power, so... Yeah. So now I will pay, pay one blue, or one red and two blue, to cast a nice little three drop here. Yeah. Ooh, Sahiri, Sahiri Ray. That is actually going to come in handy here. Yeah, it's going to keep Nahiri off ultimate for a couple of turns. But. Oh, yep, here's a Rashmi trigger. Ooh, and it's a two drop, the decoction module. Perfect. So here's a free decoction module. So now the race is really on. Yeah. And. If we draw World of Brochero, so we can start seeing the, the skies flood with opters. Luckily, I have trample on my gear hulks. But, oh, you know, I think I'm going to do this right now. We, I talked about putting this in my deck before, and I'm glad I did this. Because now I'm going to tap my Aether Hub, spending one of my energies, and 
and tap the servant of the conduit, spending another energy, double mm -hmm. green, and a blue. Oh. Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing the servant of the conduit. Very nice. Servant of the conduit costs you a creature, but you can generally get a huge upgrade depending on what you get. And Eldritch Evolution has to be exiled. Yeah. Unfortunate that you can't get a... Uh, Goblin Heart Dwellers, and then flashback that right again. Uh, but I think they were thinking ahead on that, because that'd be pretty busted. Oh, oh there is the Verse of Woe, so... You were not wanting to see that one, were you? No, luckily you don't have the energy to really get the advantage right now, and I am swinging for 16, so... Yeah, well, hey, it was the best thing I could have done right then and there. Yeah. Be because... Cut your deck there. Because now, two triggers go off here. Whirler Virtuoso and then Fabrication Module. I'll trigger Fabrication Module first. Yeah. And then don't forget your extra one on that. Yep. And I think I will actually want to pop it on Rashmi this time. Since she's going to be my bigger defender. Okay. And then Whirler Virtuoso. It's three energy. Up to a seven. Yep. Well, wait, Sahili still has her ability. So we can see a bunch of Thopters right here. Yep, but first, I better pump up Rashmi here. Again, yep. And I think I will, in fact, neg on Sahili to copy the decoction module. All right. You did not want to see that coming, did you? Nope, this is what we were trying to race against. Now, for the fun part. Well, fun for me, that is. <laughs> first, I'm going to tap this game trail. For Ovia Pashiri. Alright, there's one energy and another two. fabrication. Two, because I copied the decoction module. Oh, that's true. So that's going to be two plus one plus one counters placed on Rashmi here. Yep. And now she's going to be strong enough to take down the G Gear Hulk. Yep. Which you did not want to see happen. Well, we still, we still have kill spells in our deck and you can't ever attack with it or else uh, Nahiri kills it. Unless, of course, I go after Nahiri. Eh, I'd probably just let her die at this point. <laughs> yeah. I just want the Gear Hulks to finish the game for me. True. But then again, I've still got my... Yep. Which, it's time for the fun to begin. Am I right, buddy? Yep. Paying three. Let's see. Let's grab a stack of Thopters. Get one Thopter. But since we have two decoction modules and a fabrication, we get two energy back. And two plus one plus one counters on this. plus ones. Which means that all I need to do is just block with, like, uh, three Thopters to block your Gear Hulks now. But now, paying another three to get another Thopter. Two energy. Two Thopter. Normally, you'd want to save this for, like, on your opponent's turn, but since the copy decoction module is exiled at the end of the turn due to Sahili's ability, yeah. you'd want to use it right now. Yeah. So, I think we might as well just do it again. What do you What do you say? Might as well. You got two decoction modules. Yeah. Now, the main problem I'm going to be having here is the deck in stone. Yeah. Because if he plays that, I'm almost certainly screwed. Well, yeah, if you use too much energy and you can't uh, go off again, then yeah. So I might as well just uh, build up my forces as much as I can. Yeah. And I think one more. Yeah. Five stoppers. Five three threes for what six energy? That seems pretty decent. Yeah. yeah, talking about a net gain here. And of course, Servant of the Conduit is over here. It's exiled or sacrificed. Yeah, he's a sacrifice. Now, unfortunately, this leaves me no mana open to use Ovia's ability here. Which, if I were to use that right now, it'd be so bad for him. Uh, and unfortunately, and I think that'll have to do it right there because I want to be able to leave open some blockers to stop your Verdurus Gearhulks here. Yeah. Hmm. 
Not the card you wanted to draw. I'm uh, gonna plus in here you two and eight. Uh, discarding a servant of the conduit. Mm -hmm. Draw a card. Hmm. Didn't get what you needed, huh? Nope. But also, another thing he has to worry about here is the fact that my thopters are flying. Yep. Fortunately, I didn't find either angel, so... Grapple with the past. I'm gonna hit delirium. Or try to. Didn't. We'll go to Ishkana and see if we can't hold down the fort a little bit longer. But no... But unfortunately, it looks like you won't be able to play Ishkana this turn. Nope. Hmm. Which, that sucks. I was just looking for a kill spell there and couldn't find one. I think I may have this. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Yeah, you can make one more Thopter at the end of turn and swing for 18. So, well, no, you only got... The next stop you make is only a 1-1, one, one, but you have no, way two, more attackers. Two. Yeah, but 2-2. Two, two. But, but if I get... If I if I end up drawing Nyssa here, if I end up drawing Nyssa, then it's game over. Yeah, and this is going to be way too much damage. Yeah, if, especially with her Neg 2 ability. We can only hope for me. Well, for my sake, I should say. Of course, if he attacks with his Verdurus Gearhulks here, then he's yeah, just going to have to do something, but Rashmi's just going to eat one of them. And most of my Thopters are going to... Yeah. And I could just let the other one through. Yeah, you probably could. There's not much I can do, so let's see how he blocks. Hmm... I will have Rashmi block one of the Gear Hulks here and take the eight from the other. It's not all bad because I did get an artifact in the graveyard, which does give me delirium. But you still can't cast your spider. Yeah. I'm going to traverse the Ubenweld with delirium, which allows me to get any creature. Or any land from my deck into my hand. I doubt anything at this point could save you. No, I think I'm a little bit too far behind, considering I don't have any blockers, and he's got way more damage than that. So it looks like I've got this game here. We'll search for Emrakul, though. Yep, that's game. Because I've got Rashmi, Ovia, and all the Thopters. Oh, and my Virtuoso. And the Virtuoso, yep. So... Might as well just uh, say scoop here, huh? Oh, you got yourself a servant, which will block the Rashmi. Yeah. We'll go to your turn. All right. If I draw Nissa here, it's over. Yeah. I think you can just swing all out anyway. Well, I didn't get. I didn't get Nissa. And, and plus, you can deal one with uh, Sahili. But it does give me what I need here, because. You forget, I could use Whirler Virtuoso's effect to get the Thopter, and I don't have to put the 1-1 one, one counter on any of my cr other creatures. Yeah, that's true. But, luckily, I do have an Aether Hub, which puts an energy out, and then I will put a plus one, plus one counter on one of my Thopters. Yep. So that's 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, 16... 16. Dude, I just got this one. You gotta attack with more than just that, though. Virtuoso. Yep. To get another Thopter out. Which puts another plus one, plus one. And I will put another one here on this Thopter, making it a 5-5. Five, five. Yep, you get one of those energies back because you still have one uh, decoction. Yep, but now I'm going to use Sahili's ability to peg you for one damage. Yep. And a 17. And then I draw one card. Scry one card. I'm going to leave it on top. Because there's nothing you can do. No. Now. Attack with everything. I'm forced to block Rashmi. And I still take damage. Well, I could still just uh, pop up one more yeah. Thopter. That's it. That's game. Yep. 
Too many oh. thumpers. Oh, dude. Oh, that, that's got to be our best game that we've ever fought. That was close. I was wondering when I was going to get a kill spell. Man, I'm just going to draw all my conduits, a bunch of land. Stasis snare, way a bit too late. <laughs> the card that I scried to the top of the deck, it was nothing but a land. Yeah, you didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I had it won from the moment I put down Rashmi. No, I think it was the Eldritch Evolution that got it for you. True. Without Versaroso, you wouldn't have had that many attackers, and I think that would have gave me two attacks with my giant eight eights. Yeah. But still, that was that was a fun matchup right there. Yeah, Sahili was a really good draw because that gave you two decoctions, which is two instances of energy gain, which means the one fabrication module acted like two fabrication modules. And I didn't even need any counter spells. Nope, that that can combo. Almost combo out just out of nowhere. I knew it was coming, but and you weren't two eight eight tramples wasn't enough. And and that Ovia was actually another thing that gave me the edge I needed. Ovia Pachiri. that that allowed that me, gave me to two get... energy and two pumps. So just any creature is good when you got two uh... fabrication or one fabrication, two decoctions. So I hope you guys in, enjoyed this uh, demonstration here of what our two decks are capable of. I mean, we didn't get to see his full capabilities. I mean, he did get two freaking Gear Hulks out in this game. Yeah. We were looking for kill spells in that matchup, though. We have six ways to kill him. Plus, we have a lot of flyers ourselves, and if we were able to get a third or even a fourth turn Gisela and then pump it up, then we would have been swinging for eight in the air. Yeah. but uh, I would have had a bunch more life than two. But unfortunately, I managed to get my stuff off way sooner than he could counter any of it with his, like, Declaration in Stone and that. Because that was the one card that you were searching for whenever you were... Yeah, I would have taken a Stasis Snare at that point, too, but... <laughs> yeah, just to get rid of my, uh... 8-9 eight, eight, Rashmi, yeah. Or you could have used it to get rid of the thought, the uh, Virtuoso. Yeah, the, the Virtuoso did its damage as soon as it came down, so there wasn't too much I could do versus that. You weren't exacting ex exactly expecting me to pull out Warlord Virtuoso using the... Yeah, when I saw three mana and a Sahili, I thought that would be pretty much it. Yeah, you can make another Rashmi roll. Not even Rashmi. Although what I should have, although what I should have done it before that, I, I misplayed on that. I should have used a, a Sahili's Neg two to create the th the token before I cast Eldritch Evolution. Um, yeah, it would give you a couple more energy, but you wouldn't have had Birch. Well. Probably, yeah. Because cause, uh, Sahili's ability only cost two. Yeah. You're going to use it anyway on the decoction module, so... Yeah, you could have got a couple more energy out of it doing it that way, but yeah. I think you had it locked up as soon as you <laughs> Eldritch Evolutioned anyway. Yeah, that Eldritch Evolution is a real beast of a card. Uh, which is Maybe why... Maybe we can get revenge tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's only... Oh, yeah, that's right, because of the Beyblade thing tomorrow. Yeah. Beyblade shouldn't take too long, so yeah. Naya might get his revenge. Eh, maybe, but it's mostly about the Bays themselves that are clashing. It's not the players. Yeah. Well, next week, we've been actually asked this several times. What is, like, our favorite Magic cards of all time? And, honestly, we've been making up a nice little list of our top ten favorites for this. We're not going to be showing any images or anything like that but you get the idea for this one yeah mine since i've been playing for 21 years i might have some old school ones that people haven't even heard of but usually my favorite cards might not be the most powerful cards but they're probably the best cards that had the best stories in all my tournament play yeah and i and i started just what as soon as ravnica went out yeah you started like right when cons came out or a little bit before? Uh, it was just a little bit before uh, N15. Okay. Because I remember uh, it was June 6th back in 2012. Because that was the year that my brother uh, graduated high school. Okay. Yeah, that was right after uh, Ravnica. So. Yeah. And then I had my first uh, Magic the Gathering tournament. uh what was it, about a month before Halloween? Yeah. And then came the Halloween uh, 
tournament. That was the first time, well, I didn't actually meet him face to face. I mean, and we never even faced each other in that Friday Night Magic. Yeah, I can't remember the first time I faced off was at that booster draft that you whooped my butt in game one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got game two and three, but, man. I pulled not a good time to get mana screwed when you had, like, a 5-4 on turn three or something like that. It was pretty ridiculous. You were scared crapless that day. You were like, how the hell did you get that thing out so fast? Yeah. Content did have those dangerous enchantments if you put it on a creature of the right color. Yeah, what was it? The uh, Abzan... Uh, Abzan Rudemark or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Vigilance. <laughs> yeah. Because it was on a white creature. Mm -hmm. Oh, you were scared. Big time. Yeah, we lost that game, but fortunately we had a pretty good draw ourselves in games two and three, and I remember winning that one. Well, anyway, uh, we've been seeing a lot of games we did this because uh, th did this fight because we've been seeing things like uh, spell slingers on Geek and Sundry's channel. Yeah, it's always fun to watch. Yeah, it, like that Chris Cluey uh, episode that they had with the uh, black and blue control mm -hmm. uh, demonic pack deck. <laughs> I love that deck. Yeah, and uh, it will be missed. And uh, Sean Plot, aka Day Nine, on that channel, he he uh, was running an Abzan deck that day. I think it was a Renown deck too. Abzan Renown. Yeah, Renown was a pretty good strategy. But, and and he was looking for an ultimate prize to get rid of Chris Cluey's, uh, uh, what was it, uh, the, uh, that demon? Kothafet, Soul Hoarder. Well, yeah, that's a big card. <laughs> yeah. Swings really hard. He was looking for an ultimate prize. Final turn, he couldn't do it. And, uh... They flipped the top card of the deck to see what it was would have been. It was an ultimate prize. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you don't get your card that you want. Sometimes, next sometimes it's best to let the sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> sometimes you just don't want to know what's on top of that deck. Yeah, the just one shuffle them up and get ready for the next game. <laughs> now, and then there's also Channel Fireball. Yeah, that's usually where I hang out at the. A lot of professionals have a lot of good strategies, and a lot of where I get my play style from is some of those pros right there. Which, by the way, one of the founders of Channel Fireball actually appeared on Spellslingers. Yep, Louis Scott Vargas. One of my favorites, and probably everyone else's too. Yeah, he was uh, actually helping uh, Sean Plot display the Fate and Fury deck. He decided to do the Fate deck, mm -hmm. and he ended up losing that one. Yeah, he got overrun by a bunch of big green hydras. Sometimes that's... Just the winning strategy is just attack them for a bunch of damage and they can't stop it. Yeah, what was that lane that he kept on untapping with his uh, Voyaging Cedar? The, uh, Probably Nykthos. Nykthos trying to Nyx. Yeah, kept bunch, on getting a huge devotion boost. Yeah, bunch, a bunch of mana if you start having Nykthos and having it untapped and then using the mana that you created the first time to do it all over again and double your mana almost. Which almost reminds me of whenever I used to run Pelucranos in my old Abzan deck. Yeah, that was a big card in that deck. Oh, big time. I'm so... Uh, well, I gotta say, this this couldn't have turned out any better. Yeah, that was pretty fun. That was really close. It, it at, at least I got me drawing a kill spell, but that's pretty much at least what I we got figured to, it out. At least I got to display the mechanics of, the, of my deck. Yeah, and you didn't even have to go infinite. You just had to have enough energy. And two decoction modules is a good amount of thopters, but when they're all three threes... Hey, that you only need a third of the thopters if they're three times and as powerful. And pulling that Aether Hub whenever I did, that is what actually did it, too. Yeah, that definitely made it lethal, but I think if you swung all out, you had... Then again, I could have also used the... The, uh... One of the, uh... I mean, the, uh... What was it? The other module, the uh, fabrication module, just mm -hmm. to get the energy I needed, anyway. Yeah. You could have bounced, um, like, Warlord Virtuoso. No, that could have just given the energy. Yeah. The fabrication module is the one that gives the energy. Oh, okay. But still, it couldn't have ended up any better than that. Yeah, really close matchup. I think if I had one more turn, if I just drew one kill spell, I think I would have had it. But that that and, that and Sahili's, uh plus one ability. Yeah, you didn't need it at that point, but it was one more damage for free. Plus, at least I got to display the ability anyway. Yep. And I was worried about Nahiri there for a little bit. 
Yeah, I think the most powerful thing we could have gotten was, well, we could have got Emrakul to just swing for 13 trample in the air. <laughs> but then again, he would have been tapped. Well, he would have been back into my hand. But then but once you, you set up your Thopters, I think you had enough defense to where you wouldn't have taken lethal anyway. The only way he could have won that is if he tough decked that freaking uh, Declaration, Declaration in Stone. Yeah, Declaration would have definitely done it because then I could have just sat back with my 8 8s and then he could never attack because I have Nahiri. And then if I ultimated Nahiri, but then again, I you would have been but catching then, 13 in the air and you're only at 12. So, Yeah. But still. That was a good game, buddy. Yep. <laughs> I am so glad that we did this. Cool. We'll play again tomorrow. Yeah. Be sh if you're a Beyblade fan, be sure to check out Bay Talk. To, uh, I tell you, it's it's been really popular lately. Yeah, we only had the one matchup of the tournament, and we had an upset there, so. Yeah. Yeah, regular uh, so. Metal Fusion me or Metal Saga, they go up against a, a Synchrome Bay there. Yeah, the first week was an upset, so goes to show you you can never you can never know what is gonna happen. And we've been we've been extremely busy. That's why we haven't really been filming a lot lately. Yeah, the store is growing in popularity and we're doing a lot more business and we're covering a lot more games with all the game rooms that we have, but that's definitely a good thing. Yeah. And the fact that I've got my work schedule, so trying to work around that. Yeah, having a job, you can afford the cards that you want and the, the hobbies that you want, but unfortunately it takes away the time to actually do those hobbies. Especially on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which is like my work nights. Yeah. Yeah. I, we've been trying to do these on Tuesdays, but... Tuesdays have actually turned out to be really busy with the big Yu-Gi-Oh crowds and stuff like that. Yeah. But Thursdays and Wednesdays seem to be our better days, even though... New comic book days are on Wednesdays. Yeah, well, we're waiting on UPS because <laughs> you never know when they're going to show up. Could be right when we open or it could be right when we're ready to close. You just never know. But if they come early in the morning, then that's good time for us to film. Yeah. But Thursdays, they're not that popular. They're, they're like the most dead days of the week or something like that. Yeah, we don't really do anything magic-wise except for we do a lot of trading, force of will. Tried it's been get, picking up in popularity, but it's not super popular yet. Tried to get in on the popper format for this place, but didn't work. Yeah, popper, it's really fun to talk about and come up with crazy decks, but some of those old cards that you need are really hard to get a hold of unless you just go online and straight up buy them. Or, like the, like Arrow the Dragon used to do, get those big one pound uh, bricks yeah. for like five bucks. Yeah, but then you don't know what you're getting, so. But... I my uncle actually uh, gave me a bunch of his older stuff. I mean we I mean it's pretty good. I, I mean like we had uh, what was it a uh, transmute artifact? Oh yeah. I, I believe that has actually sold really fast lately. Yeah, it got up to sixty bucks, and then somebody wanted to make a big trade for it, but it wasn't good for our side, so we passed on it. We still got it for now, but it's definitely some interest for it. Oh yeah. Lots of people have been actually peeking at it. I mean, you get, like, how many views a day on that thing? Uh, I'm not sure how many views, but, I mean, it's a great EDH card, and artifacts are super popular, so... Yeah. Some it's EDH player will be extremely happy to buy it. And put oh, it yeah. And it's in per it was in perfect condition, too, pretty much. Yeah, for as how old it is, man, can't find it much better looking than that. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be the best condition that's, that any Transmute artifact has ever been in. Probably, yeah, unless somebody's just you know, got one that they don't know they have. Uh, I still remember the first time I ever pulled a Planeswalker. Me too. Pulled three at once. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pulled two in one day after buying a single. And one of them actually happened to be a copy of the single that I pulled, that I <laughs> bought that day. Garuk Apex Predator. Yeah, too bad you could only really run, run one of those in your main board. Before you just have way too many seven drops. Yeah. You really only have and then one. that same day I pulled a uh, Soar and Solemn Visitor. Now that you can probably put four of in your deck and be fine with. So good. Unfortunately, he's not in standard anymore. Yeah, he'll be missed. But... That that card actually saved my hind end at one mag at one Friday night magic. Yeah, he, I, I think he we, saved my butt too quite a few times. I think we should tell people that that story right now before we forget about it. 
Because remember, what, because you were actually watching me that day. It was against yeah. that one guy who was had that storm breath dragon mm -hmm. monstrified and the uh, teamer or the uh, the uh, knuckle the savage knuckle savage blade, knuckle blade yeah. that was enchanted with the teamer or not teamer but Jeskai rune mark. Yep. So it was a six six first strike fly flying. Yeah. Well, it, it didn't rough. actually have first strike. Team or not, Savage yeah. Knuckleblade doesn't have first strike. It has the triple abilities that can be. Yeah, but I think the Rune Mark gives two abilities depending on what no. it's a chain with. No, it, no if, it if you just flying. yeah, it just gives flying if you've got a blue or white or a red or white permanent, which he was running. That's still, that's a six six flyer that can turn into an eight eight flyer, so it's pretty beefy. And and the thought, if anything is, he was a running teamer that day. Anyway, I was down to three life left. I say three because. It was my it was my upkeep. I had two uh, next please rams. Yeah, so you're technically at one, but then you went up to three. Yeah, and I had a bunch of creatures out, but most of them were black or white. Mm -hmm. And that stupid storm breath dragon had protection from white. Yep, yeah, can't block it with uh, white creatures. So now, if I had drawn my uh, if I had drawn my uh, uh, Elspeth, Elspeth, yeah, I could have neg threed on her. And just nuked his entire board pretty much. But then, much. It, then it would have nuked my field, too, because I had those eight those pack leaders out. Yeah, but still, it's better than dying. <laughs> and 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 I just draw my card. It turns out to be Drumoka the Eternal, which, good card. But then I'm thinking, I could use her to block the Knuckle Blade, but... And I, and I also had Sor and Solemn Visitor out, and he had two loyalty counters on him. And his neg, too, allows me to create a flying creature. Yeah, and it's a black vampire, so hey, at least you got a blocker for that storm breath. But then I wouldn't have anything left over. Yeah. Then I realized he's all tapped out, and I'm like, well, I could go for an all-out swing, but I don't didn't have enough life to. I didn't have he didn't I didn't have enough attack power to wipe him Kill out. Him. Yeah. But then I'm thinking, oh god, and you sat there thinking, man, you're so screwed. No, you <laughs> said that out loud to me. You're like, no, you're screwed here. <laughs> but then. I got the idea. Eric saw the look in my face whenever I finally settled in on it. He knew that I had the ch chance to win right there. Yep. Plus one Soren. Give everything lifelink and plus one. So maybe Inc you just live another turn. Including lifelink on the Rams. Yep. So one five lifelink. It's not going to do the best, but hey, maybe it was But good before I did that, I played Dramoka. Yep. Just to be able to give her that, because Soren's effect lasts until my turn. Yep, so at least you have a 6-5 blocker for the um, Knuckle blade. blade. But then here, here went, so I attacked all out, got a huge crap ton of life back and hit him for hard. Basically almost rhinoed him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he does something extremely stupid on his turn. He just plays a land, empty hand. Yep. The idiot then all out swings on Soren. <laughs> okay. That was dumb on his part. Yeah, he probably could have swung one of them at Soren. Storm oh, Breath. Storm Breath, yeah. And just left his Knuckle Blade open. Yeah, because if you attack with the Knuckle Blade, you're just going to gain six off of the Jermoka with a plus one. And, life even, on it. and even if it was to die, even if it. Even if he wanted to save it, it's he. All he'd have to do is just pay the man, and Knuckle Blade would return to his hand. But then I'd get to keep yeah. my dragon. Yeah, or he could pump it up and make it an eight eight. But hey, you still gain six. But then again, he would have been all tapped out too. Mm -hmm. But he swung all out on Soren. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Soren takes thirteen, whatever. But it wasn't all bad. Losing one player with Walker, I top decked another, a Johnny. <laughs> Steadfast. Uh -oh. Then I neg would on him. Yep. So get everyone a plus one, plus one counter and <laughs> kill them. Yep. I gotta say, though, that one. <laughs> yeah, Soren's plus one with the any decent sized army to get you right you back didn't, in the game. You didn't even see that option available to me. Well, I couldn't say anything. You're in the middle of a tournament matchup, but sometimes but, plus one Soren is just the way to go. Yeah, but you didn't even see it. You're like, I don't even see how you could... You were like, I don't see how you can survive this at all. Yeah, you were getting beat down pretty hard the whole game, and then you just... Then I then I showed you what... Up. Then I showed you what you overlooked. Soren. Yep. 
Even, just goes to see, show you, any planeswalker can just get you right back in the game. That's why I tend to put a lot in my decks. I mean, look at know. I mean, look at what Sahili did for me in this game. Yeah, pretty much won you the game right there. <laughs> yeah, that double decoction module right there. <laughs> it's yeah. a good thing that I didn't have, e didn't tap either of them either, because Nahiri could have destroyed them. With oh, yeah. Anytime Nahiri gets to destroy an enchantment or an artifact, that's usually what you want to do, because artifacts and enchantments right now are pretty powerful, and there's not a lot you can do against them. And right now, there's not really that many enchantments that actually tap. No, she doesn't have to... Any enchantments don't have to be tapped, though. She can just minus two to exile those. Yeah. Because the enchantments don't tap normally. It's anyway. mostly, it's just tapped creatures and tapped artifacts that she can target yeah. with that. Or just enchantments themselves. Yeah. But still, I was worried about that Nahiri. I was really worried about that Nahiri. Yeah, I definitely could have swung with an Emrakul in the air and got you pretty good. Especially if you didn't have any blockers for flying. Because you didn't have any flying blockers either until Virtuoso just... But top made a bunch of them. Top decking that Aether Hub whenever I did at the very end there, that's what got me the game right there. Uh, I just had to beat you before you ever got Virtuoso, because once the Healy hit the board, yeah, you can have two decoctions, which is enough to not necessarily go infinite, but probably enough to just kill you anyway. Yeah, and luckily that's... But thankfully for that Eldritch Evolution, I mean, the, the Servant of the Conduit served its purpose. Yeah. Get, yeah. Pumping up to Rashmi like that, yeah, he gave Rashmi a plus one, plus one, made a mana, and turned into Virtuoso, which is basically a game. Which, that was extremely lucky that I pulled that Eldritch. Actually, Did funny you thing is, that one? actually, no. Yeah, you had that? I had that in the hand from the very start. Yeah. It's just setting up for it. And and you guys, man, I had a pretty good opening uh, land base right there. Yeah, you had all your colors and... It's only a three-color deck. Mine's only a three-color deck. We both had our dual lands, so no mana issues. Yeah. And I mean... Just drawing the right answers to the other person's combo, basically. Honestly, that, that game couldn't have gone any more perfect than it did. Yeah, it was really close. And yeah, I mean, those you, those Gear Hulks are winning conditions right there. Oh, yeah. And four, I want to well, pump to, up Gisela's, but hey, they're 8-8 eight, eight, they're eight, eight trample. And I was down to four life, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was our best shot without any creature kill, though. Yeah. If we get creature kill, I think we win, but if we don't, then... Although, the problem there was also if I had drawn my uh, Harness Lightnings, too. Yeah, you could have killed one with enough energy, but I'd rather you use your energy on that than make an army of flyers that kills me. But then again, I remember, I also had the, I also had the Fabrication module, which could yeah. have allowed me to pump, too. Mm -hmm. But, all in all... That was fun. Yeah. I'll have to do it again. Yeah. yeah. It depends on what decks. Of course, I may have to borrow one of your decks that you make in the future whenever we uh, debut them. Yeah, recently I've made an Esper Control deck with a bunch of, bunch of walkers, and I've been winning Friday Night Magic and I won Saturday Standard with it, too. So Might have to let me borrow that one against your Naya Legend. Yeah, that should be an interesting matchup. Oh, I got a lot of counter spells in there and a lot of exile, so the, it's going to be really hard for me to get my angel combo. But the problem is here that most of his cards in, that he uses in his Naya Legends go in his Esper deck. Uh, just a couple of uh, Declaration in Stone. That's just a really good kill spell. Actually, don't you have a deck in Stone in your uh, Naya Legends uh, sideboard? Sideboard, probably. We could probably get both decks running at the same time. Because I got two Abyssins, one in each deck, so. Yeah. But still. Well, I hope you enjoyed this fight. I mean... We sure did. Yeah, because this has got to be the most fun that we've had in a long time. Yeah, we... Especially, well, whenever it comes to magic. Yeah. Because normally we have just a little bit of time to play, but we usually don't get to play that often anymore since you got work, and I'm technically and, supposed to be working, but... <laughs> yeah, but, and on Friday night, Friday night's... I've just been really tired lately because I work during the days on Friday nights. Yeah, that's true. I mean... Well, you could join us if uh, you got a nap in between. Well, it's mostly my legs that are the problem. Mm -hmm. My legs and my feet, they tend to get a little wobbly from being up and around for so many hours at a time. Yep. I mean, it's almost like going to the zoo. <laughs> <sighs> you just want to see everything all, as quickly as you can. Without any breaks. Yeah. But still, it was fun. We had a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, 
Maybe next time we can get these two decks going for a rematch, or we'll have a couple of new decks for you. Yeah. Too bad it's not going to be my uh, werewolf deck. Yeah, we could never get that one going right. Yeah, I mean, the the reason is we didn't get that legendary. That and there's just a bunch of creature kill out right now, so it's hard to get a creature-based combo going. Unless, it, but you gotta remember the uh, sil silver for partisans were actually the answer to the targeting things. Yeah. Which <laughs> the silver for partisans, you gotta hate those. Yeah. yeah. Although keep on multiplying. Well, until next time, everybody. Play more magic, and may you draw well.